is on the line with us, filmmaker, director, activist, founder of Brave New Films. BraveNewFilms.org is the website, and you can tweet him at Robert Greenwald or at Brave New Films. Robert, welcome back to the program. It's been a while. Thank you, Tom. It's good to be back. It's great to have you with us. So you've got a new project? Yes, we have a short uh, film, short as in 13, 14 minutes, about immigrant prisons. We've been doing a lot of work this year on the issue of uh, immigration and the mistreatment of immigrants and the, uh, some of the horrific actions that have been taken. And this one is an investigative expose piece. People are starting to screen it all around the country. And it goes into something that many of us don't know about. There are over 200 immigrant prisons spread throughout the United States. Several hundred thousand people are being locked up who have been, uh, who have not been accused or committed any kind of a crime, but it's, quote, convenient for the government to hold on to them. And the average stay is anywhere from a year upwards, and we have several personal stories in the film of immigrants who've been locked up for years and years. And then on top of it all, or as part of it all, you mix this ideology and this hatred with the profit motive. So you have CCA and GEO Group profiting from these prisons around the country. How much of this is immigration from Mexico and Central American countries versus immigration from the whole world? Well, because the uh, administration and ICE will is keeps as much information secretive as possible it's very difficult to know many facts that being one of them and sometimes we get facts and they're not accurate facts but what we do know is that it's a practice it's something that the day after Trump was elected the largest increase in stocks was with the private prison group CCA and GEO group because they were responding to his election and to his com commitment to lock up more and more immigrants. I thought he was going to deport them. What's the value in, you know, if, if you've got somebody in the country and they're not supposed to be in the country, what's the value in spending, what, 100 bucks a day to put them in a jail as opposed to spending a 100 bucks once and put them on a bus? Well, um, that's an interesting question, and it depends. You can come at it from a couple of angles. One is that there are some procedures that have to be followed, even under this administration, before the actual act of deportation can take place, number one. Number two, the private prison companies, and I'm not suggesting it's only a profit motive, because I think it's important to talk about ideology, policy, and profit. But certainly the prison groups who've given a significant amount of money to Trump and to the Republican convention uh, stand to benefit. In fact, since CCA and G Group are public companies on, on conference calls, they've talked about the fact that things look good for them because of the current administration, because of the plan to expand the number of available beds around the country, and even plans and hopes we'll see if we can stop them about building more prisons. Well, I, I remember watching uh, Michael Moore's movie, Where to Invade Next, when he went to Norway and looked at their prison system and, I, and, and then compared that with the United States. In fact, it was the one moment in the movie where I actually had tears in my eyes. Uh, it was powerful. Are there any other countries that have privatized prisons like we are? I am not certain of that. I don't think anybody, ha if any others have done it, nobody has done it on the scale that we have. And this is not prisons, but we're also, we've done a lot of work this year, year on bail, and we're part of a large coalition in California uh, with the ACLU and all kinds of uh, safety and justice, all kinds of terrific groups who are going to help change the law in California. And on bail, for example, the United States and the Philippines the only two countries in the world that have for money profit bail. So this privatization notion, or as I prefer to call it, the introduction of the profit motive, privatization sounds a little maybe wonky, but when you say for profit, then it gives people a way to understand, oh, these immigrant prisons are being uh, they're run by people who are focused on profit, and therefore, 
when, as you see in the film, there are not doctors, there are not nurses, they are locked up for longer and longer times, it makes sense if you see it from the lens of maximizing profit and supporting an ideology that's based on hatred. So for those Americans who don't base their ideology on hatred and who do believe that we should have a vibrant public sphere and th that there are appropriate areas for, for government activity that are inappropriate for the profit motive, and I would put at the top of that list our vote, which has been privatized with all these private voting machines and, and for-profit you know, companies, and our prisons, and you know, obviously our schools, our water supplies, our electricity. I mean, there's a whole bunch of areas where you have these absolute natural monopolies, which historically have always been viewed as the appropriate place for public, public control and public content. Um, how can Americans who believe that this is wrong push back? Um, and also, by the way, I'd include the military. Time, yes. Which Knows me. Yes, it's absolutely. Been enormous horrible things with privatization there. Yeah, and you you did brilliant work on this in in the in in Afghanistan and Iraq too. Thank you, and you've been a big help in getting the word out there. Well, pushing back, um, we are in a time now. One of the good news aspects of it is more people are more engaged in pushing back and in changing government policy, elected officials. Uh, national, state, and local. And so there are multiple ways to do it. I think the most important thing, and the film, by the way, is available at Brave New Films, and it's free. Um, the most important thing is to do something. So if you are focused on the electoral process, we know there are all kinds of elections going on. If you're focused on ballot initiatives, the, there have been ballot initiatives that have pushed back on the building of private prisons and the privatizing of prisons. There's been legislation introduced, as I say, in California that looks like uh, there's one, one piece of legislation has already passed and that will limit the expansion of private prisons, and it looks like there's more. And because so much of criminal justice policy is state or local based, it does give us an opportunity to be effective, to see change, and to not wait for something to happen in Washington, D.C. There are think tanks that are doing good work on this. There are groups that are organizing, uh, activist groups. There's a wonderful group we're working with called Civic that sends people to visit immigrants who are in prison, that, and as well as organizing action and advocacy campaigns. So there's really a lot that can be done. I think the important thing for everybody, Tom, and each of us is different, is where do you feel comfortable? Do you feel comfortable forwarding the film to the, your friends on Facebook? Do you feel comfortable going to an elected official's office and asking them to screen the film? Do you feel comfortable writing to your local newspaper and asking uh, to have an op-ed on the subject? There are lots of different opportunities depending on skill set and comfort level. So this is, the, the film is free, it's at bravenewfilms.org, uh, and uh, it's, it's in a format that you can forward to other people, things like, uh, you know, kind of a YouTube or Vimeo or something like that? Ex absolutely. We have it on our YouTube channel, we have it on Facebook, we have it on the website, uh, we po we've posted links on Twitter, uh, and if you're a teacher or a Leader in a faith community, we have a very robust program now where we're screening films and we're going to be screening this with others with teaching guides or reflection guides in faith community. We're up to almost 3,000 teachers and educators around the country who are participating in our Brave New Educator program, also free. You can go to Brave New Educators and sign up there. So we're looking and focusing a lot on Robert, how do we reach as big an audience as possible.